right, so it's been a while since I've worked on the Lotus. Right now, what I'm gonna be doing is pulling this little shield and that heat shield down there so that I can get to the exhaust header. His music is saying, F you to the audience, but in a really beautiful way. It's like, F you, I love you. Now let me play you some beautiful music, you know? So there's this feeling like, um, they're gonna do whatever they want and, and assert their own will and not worry about how it's being understood or whatever. Yeah, the wonderful thing about that is that it speaks to people. I got the exhaust manifold, heat shield off, the cat, and uh, it wasn't too bad. I was unsure if I was gonna be able to get to the header without taking the rear clamshell off, but uh, you can kind of weasel it out this hole right here. So uh, I just got the header off. I thought it was gonna be super, super difficult. It was fairly difficult. There's like this weird emissions tube that kind of goes back over here and hooks onto the side over there. You just gotta finagle it out. And I was able to get the header out. So I guess the big question now is whether or not the aftermarket header is gonna fit through this hole, which it should. I'm gonna clean that surface real quick. I got a new gasket. A uh, new exhaust gasket, just an OEM one, and then uh, I'll try to finagle the header back up in there, and it should go fairly smoothly, I hope. <laughs> this thing is not exactly light. Don't drop it on your face. So I don't really have a choice, but um, my sway bar is touching the header. These cars don't really have a sway bar from the factory, so it's a modification meets a modification that don't know that these modifications are supposed to be there. So I gotta modify one thing, and it's either shave down the sway bar or dent the header. And I feel like it's a little more advantageous to dent the header which is really nice and expensive and a lot more expensive than the sway bar. But uh, I don't really have a choice because if I cut the sway bar, then the sway bar doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And yeah. Hmm. Book. update it's later in the day a guy came over and bought my subaru engine which i've been trying to sell for like i don't know like eight months or something i'm gonna deliver it to him tomorrow or friday or something like that anyways this was a serious ass subaru build i mean it's like dart and t sleeves gsc cams super tech buckets dlc coating kevlar timing belt uh port and polished heads it's got a dailies engineering dry sump system on the bottom dry sump pump and shit Try some tank. The last thing I have for the Subaru build is the endless brakes. But there was a point where I was beating shit up. And the reason I was beating shit up, so here is this update. I got the header on, but since I have a rear sway bar, which most Lotuses don't have, this is an add on part that I put on from InnoKinetic. It's a DNA rear sway bar. You like drill into the lower control arm right there and put that on. Anyways. It was touching the header because the header is not designed to work with a sway bar because there's not typically one on there. So I bashed up my brand new fucking really expensive header. So this is a little LCD display that's gonna go in the car that'll give me pretty much whatever I want. But originally this is designed to be an O2 sensor like air fuel ratio. So this plugs into the back of that O2 sensor and then runs up to this box, which is kind of useless, but it's a box. It's like fully hollow, but it's got a tiny little PCB in there. That plugs into there. Then you have these, which are for external sensors that also plug into here, or actually over here. I just installed the O2 sensor for the wideband and ran all the wires. Ugh. I've got the O2 sensor wire running kind of parallel with the shifty cables. 
shift cables. Um, and then it's running underneath here, kind of all the way up to the front with uh, a good amount of zip ties holding it there. I gotta make it flush because there's a plate that goes up in here and you gotta make sure it's below this. This is the highest point, so. Okay, it's kind of together. I'm gonna start it all up and make sure there's no exhaust leaks or anything. And uh, I just wanna hear how it sounds. Next day, little update. I ended up putting on all of these springs, two per thing. This donut gasket, I ended up having to swivel a little bit to get it to seat right because this joint right here is really tight. Uh, and I just needed to shift the entire exhaust over a little bit to this side so that um, everything would fit perfectly. I'm also gonna wipe all of this stuff down with uh, alcohol so that my fingerprints don't show up. Um, if the thing gets dirty and it gets hot, it'll pull the oil into the actual metal and it'll look like shit. Ask me how I know. Don't fucking shoot out of here at Mach 3. How am I gonna do this? Oh yeah. Get in there, you fucker. Yes. <laughs> I would say it probably shaved like three to four pounds just based on touching them. Uh, okay, so now I got these to wire up. But my plan right now is to remove this cup holder, which is only in the 08 and up cars, and it's completely useless. The only thing it can hold is a freaking beer bottle or a tiny little water bottle. So uh, I'm gonna remove that, tap into one of these fuses down here, and then I'm probably gonna mount that thing right here and see if it holds. a moment of truth I got all this stuff just kind of loosely wired up over here this should power on I'm gonna go ahead and just like turn it on so you can see exactly how it works so the oil temp and uh, the air fuel ratio are the ones that are working the ones on the bottom the user doesn't do anything and the EGT is just there <laughs>
makes like 240 at the wheel at like 165 foot pounds. But just the driving experience alone makes this car like literally the best car I've ever been in. And I've been in some pretty badass cars in my life. This is kind of like the perfect balance of it's still a car, it still has some creature comforts, but yet it's super lightweight, just weighing just under 2,000 pounds and having mid-engine, rear-wheel drive, tiny little wheels, no man or all manual steering, no assisted steering in any way. The supercharger whine, the way that it feels like an NA engine, but it's got that little bit of low-end torque down low that you want. Oh, here comes a bridge. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. I know it's kind of different from what I normally do with drones and whatnot, but I enjoy cars just as much as I enjoy drones. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. If you like this type of video, just, I don't know, tell me in the comments. If you don't, then wait for the next one because it'll be drone related. Peace.